Uh, we've gotten to the part of the course where a student usually starts hating a calculus teacher even more if they didn't already hate them enough. Because um, remember the whole limit definition of a derivative when we tried to find f prime? We have to go through this big, long process trying to make those, those h's cancel out so that we don't have a divide by zero problem anymore. Well, now we can use something called the power rule. Okay, to find a derivative, to find f prime of x, that means you're trying to evaluate the derivative with respect to x of f of x. And to do that, the derivative is a linear operator. That means like the derivative can apply to each term, like the distributive property. So in other words, you can do the derivative with respect to x of what f of x is. It's 6x squared plus, three, uh, plus x plus 3. And the, the, the derivative operator gets to distribute to each separate term. So you're trying to find the derivative with respect to x of 6x squared plus the derivative with respect to x of x plus the derivative with respect to x of 3. Okay, now all that might be like, well, that's just a bunch more writing. You're going to be able to skip all this once you see what we're going for here. Because we have something called the power rule with derivatives. Instead of using the limit definition of a derivative, if you can isolate it to be just something with a, with a power, like 6x squared, the way you can find the derivative, instead of trying to use the limit definition of the derivative, is make that power come down and multiply to this 6 and then reduce it by 1. So it's going to be 12x to the first. And there, we found that derivative. <laughs> okay, This one has a power of 1, so make that 1 come down and multiply to the front, and then reduce it by 1. That's the power rule. And then when you get to a constant, it's like x to the 0 power, right? But the big idea with finding a derivative constant is what, how fast does 3 change? Right? What's the what? How how fast does three change with respect to x? It doesn't. Right? There is no change. It's flatlining. So a derivative of just a planal number without the variable x is zero. Okay. And then to simplify this, tw this is twelve x plus one. That's it. We don't need the limit definition of a derivative. Okay. Because now we have the power rule from our text. Don't have to do all that stuff. So <clears throat> let me just repeat what we did there. Whoa. <laughs> Okay, we want this derivative, so you can just do it term by term using the power rule. Make that 2 come down and multiply it to the 6. Make that power of 1 come down, and then it gets reduced by 1. So now that's x to the 0 power, or in other words, just 1. So that's our derivative. So I'll skip all that notation. The power rule means that 7 comes down and multiplies to the coefficient out front. So that's negative 7 thirds, but then the power gets reduced by 1. So this is the derivative. Find the derivative. The 7 comes down, that's negative 7 thirds x to the 6. And then here, the 1 comes down, so that's 1x to the 0. In other words, just 1. You could put the x to the 0 if it makes you happy. And then the derivative of a constant is nothing. It doesn't change with respect to x. So that's your derivative. <laughs> no more limit definition of a derivative. They want us to find the derivative at x equals negative 2. So let's first find the derivative. Uh, so using the power rule, that 4 comes down and multiplies, and then the power gets reduced by 1. And now this power of 1 comes down and multiplies to 1 third, that just makes 1 third, but then the power gets reduced by 1. So that's just x to the 0, which is 1, right? And then the rate of change of a constant is 0. It's, it's a constant, it's not changing. So this represents the derivative. They want to know the derivative at a specific point. So that just means we're supposed to plug in negative 2 everywhere where we see an x. So negative 2 to the third, that's negative 8. So this is negative 64 minus 1 third. Why do they make us do fractions, huh? Uh, get common denominators. So that's negative 192 over 3 minus 1 over 3. So that's negative 193 over 3. I don't want to type that in. There we go. I think that might be all those types of that problem. Yeah, and so same thing as, as one of the earlier questions. Find the derivative, plug in negative 1.